you know, there's some really interesting stuff. One of the interesting things about this show is you have some small companies that are really just getting started. Like, mm -hmm. they have no distribution. Mm -hmm. And they're, that's why they're here. Yeah. And sometimes their stuff is kind of neat. Yeah. You, know, you get to see, like, weird little stuff from little bitty companies. Yeah. There's a guy that I know. I don't know how much time we have. But a uh, guy that I used to work with at Mossberg, Luca Minnelli. Mm -hmm. Minnelli Stocks, really nice wood stocks. Yeah. He's starting a new brand called Woos, w Wooks. W Wooks. I just saw Wooks. that. Yeah. That guy is one of the premier wood makers in the world. Uh, stocks, air guns all over Europe, some American gun stocks. We work with him at Mossberg. Remember the LRs? Yeah. The L with the adjustable cheek pieces yeah. that had the real coarse stippling? That's wood. Yeah. With just this rubberized stippling yeah, over it. Yeah, they're doing some neat stuff. And and he's 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 a literally a doctor, like rocket scientist from Cambridge. Oh he worked gosh. on the he was a family business, three generations wood factory in Italy. Yeah. He goes away. <clears throat> Gets his doctorate in rocket science, works on the Galileo space station or something. Dad says, please come home and run the company. He's literally a rocket scientist. Literally a rocket scientist. <laughs> literally. That's like what you, you say, want. Design smart your as stocks. a rocket scientist. But you walk in there and then he said, you know, when I walked in, there's, you know, I grew up in this factory with sawdust everywhere and this. And so you walk in there now, it's, it's like sick. Right. Just, just clean. Clean. And all, all the sawdust gets pulled away and. They make gun stocks. They make toys. They make all the wood, like salad bowls and forks for crate and barrel oh, and restoration wow. hardware. Yeah. They make women's hairbrushes. Yeah. And they lay the uh, bristles. Jeez. Those wood hairbrushes are very expensive, but it's but women, affluent, you know, whatever. There's no electricity in wood. Oh sure. So you have a brush that has the little bristles and then a little ball on the end. Yeah. That's all wood. So they make the t the little bristle. Six in there, so that's that guy. <clears throat> so welcome to Brush Talk. We are live from Orlando. <laughs> we went off the rails already. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we were talking about hairbrushes. <laughs> you know, it's cool stuff. We, you do see some cool stuff at this yeah. show, huh, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a company here who has a lot of other businesses, and they use their technology yep. in this industry to make really cool stuff, as an old friend of mine. Yeah, that's fantastic. So we're here with Tom Taylor from Sig Sauer, and, uh, you know, throughout the last couple of days, we've been talking with the Poma Caliber Award winners, NASGW Poma Caliber Award winners, and you've got Best Optic and Best Rifle and all this. Well, we've got it here. The Sig Sauer P365 SAS won uh, the other night for Best Handgun. Yes. And uh, we got a little footage from it. Take a look. So winning an award like the Caliber Award is very special special to us at SIG because it's what we enjoy doing. We enjoy, enjoy uh, coming up with new ideas, with innovation, whether it be any of the categories we're in, firearms, optics, ammo suppressors, air guns. The P365 SAS is just uh, another product that brought something truly unique to the market, and it's what we do. It's what we enjoy. So uh, thank you. So obviously, people know SIG Sauer. They know you guys do handguns. The P365 platform has just been incredible. Yeah, I mean, I think when we launched that a couple of years ago, the word that was used over and over and over again was a game changer, revolutionary, those kind of things. And because, as most people know, what it did is it changed. Not only is it a very uh, shootable gun and it's a SIG, the quality is there, but it also expanded capacity. And that was right. the, the number one thing when people say, you know, what about, what, what would you do differently for a, a pocket pistol or a concealed carry handgun? More capacity. So where you have six or seven rounds in most platforms, this gun went to 10 plus one. So you had an 11 round gun, and then when you went with the extended magazine, you're up to 13 rounds, 12 yeah, plus one. It's, and, so, and, it's, and it's just <clears throat> such a small package. I mean, I, I know probably most of our viewers have, have seen it and held it, but I mean, the thing is basically as big as my hand, and you're talking about being able to have 11 rounds of nine millimeter, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Now the SAS takes it a new direction, kind of takes that concealed carry up to a different place. Mm -hmm. I mean, SAS, SIG, anti-snag, what goes into this one? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a term that was around before in our 238s and 938s, and, and basically concealed carry pistols to try to make them as um, edgeless as possible, if you will. So SIG, anti-snag was a term that actually goes back a, a, a ways. So it hasn't really been something we've done a lot with in recent years, but when we thought of this idea to say, okay, what's what's the next thing, next iteration of something you can do for a pistol that goes in your pocket? Or, you know, deep concealed carry, a vest or a coat or whatever is like, let's take off every edge there is. Right. So, so what's been done is, uh, you know, there's a lot of things around the edges that have been rounded here, but as you notice on this gun, the most Im impressive or, or unique thing is there are no sights. So yeah. I don't know how well easy no that is to see. No sights sticking up, yeah. No, sorry, yeah, it has sights. It just yeah. has no sights 
sticking up. You know, you also notice it's ported here. That's another important thing that, you know, a, a little sort of snappy at times, you know, pocket pistol, we yeah, ported it. Helps it helps control it. So it helps control it. Um, but there, there's no sight, so there's really nothing here to get hung up on. So uh, this is actually a site that's been around for uh, a while, the Meprolite Bullseye site. Um, but it was never really adopted because when it was put on a gun, it was usually just stuck on top of the slide. Sure. People it's, just said, eh, that's, that's the old way we think of it. You know, you yeah. stick sights on top of a gun. Now, we, we, know, we know about slides being cut for a red dot, mm -hmm. but this is like you sunk these sights into the slide. Yeah, so we so that was the thought process. So it was, okay, reflex sights now. We have these slide cuts to be able to make the, the reflex sights lower and lower and lower. And we said, why don't we take a look at putting this in here? So we, we started working with their engineers and our engineers, and we, we quality engineered it a little more deeply and, and began to get it incorporated in the gun. And so now you have this all the things that I talked about in terms of the anti-snag right. part of the gun. But then you talk about what the sight actually is. And, right. and I've yet to see somebody raise this gun to their eyes and look at it for the first time and, and sort of have this reaction like, oh, whoa, what's that? <laughs> yeah, because basically, I mean, you well, you can talk about your reaction the first yeah, time you, you saw it. So you pick it up and you go, I don't, I don't understand. And then you look into the back mm -hmm. of where this is cut. And I don't know, Jace, if you can try. I'll open this gun up a little bit. Um, if you can try to look down the barrel or, or look down the back of the gun here, and you, I, can, I can try to line it up for you a little bit. But if you look into the back of the gun, you basically have a circle and a dot. And it, I think of it kind of like a level, if you're, you know, mm -hmm. a, a level you'd use as a carpenter. And uh, I'm going to try to, oh, you're starting to see it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I know we're doing this live, but, you know. There you go. Oh, there it is right there. See? And, but, you know, it's one of those things, the, the human eye is pretty amazing. It lines it up really quickly. Oh, when you, when you, you raise this gun, you, 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 you dry fire it a couple times or, or raise it to your eyes a couple times and, and you get the hang of it. And then a couple shots in, you start getting the hang, the hang of it really quick. So, you know, you, when you're moving it, the dot's moving around, right. you know, in, in a circle. But then once you get centered, it just, it just pops on your eyes. Yeah. And this isn't, even though you can because it's a 365 and it's a SIG, you can shoot this gun at 25 yards or 50 yards if you're a... a you know, qualified shooter to do that, but it really wasn't intended for that. This is no. intended to be a point and shoot at five to seven yards, and maybe the quickest side acquisition that I've ever seen on a on a little combat gun. Quick like shots. We put out a we put out a video when we were uh, with with Phil Strader, your pistol product manager. Who, yeah, admittedly, Phil is a, a great yeah, shooter, yeah. Um, above average. But he's way <laughs> above average. But we had him on these plates, and I think he said, "Oh, are those ten inch plates? I think they were eight inch plates." Mm -hmm. And he goes, let me just, for fun, let's just try to go fast. He goes, bing, 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 bing. Even his reaction was, oh, God, that's fast. Yeah. I mean, it was hilarious. We were all laughing because Phil was just, like, you know, so impressed. Yeah. We got a question. <laughs> Richard <laughs> says the money, the money is burning a hole in his pocket. So and when, Richard, we will happily take your money. Yeah. <laughs> are these out now? Are they are they in stores? These are shipping. They are. They are shipping, right. and and the only issue is they're they're they we need to ship them faster apparently because the demand has been really high. Uh, they're in the market. It's not they're not like a unicorn kind of gun that's right. really hard to find, but but they're definitely moving fast a little faster than we anticipated. The first question I had when I took a look at this concept is would it be considered hokey or or right. you know. Just, yeah, is this a gimmicky uh, yeah, thing? Gimmick, yeah, they're just going to sell to 10 people that are just going to think this is a, a gimmicky thing. And so the, one of the first things I did um, is I took this to some of our special operator, former special operators, and you know some of those characters oh, I yeah. that uh, have some Master significantly Chief higher. Guys. Yeah, and, and, uh, and in both the Army highest level special forces and the, the water boys. And um, they took it to the range and, and – shot it and, and when I approached them they said it's absolutely not hokey it's legitimate uh, this is a great little battle gun and those guys they don't they don't they don't, they don't they, first they don't BS us and no. secondly you know they're they've seen everything and they're mostly using red dot optics now right in the special forces for concealed carry maybe a little different but uh, but no one of the most harsh critics came back to me said first of all I, I verified that it was a great little close quarter battle gun so then I started walking it out, and he said I was shooting at, at plates at 100 yards. And again, 100 much like yards. 100 wow. yards, much like Phil Strader, this is not your average he, shooter. He's a real good shooter. Um, yeah. but, but still, he said I was able. So you basically cover up your target with the, the circle, the, the bullseye, if you will, 
and you pull the trigger. And he said it just it was very intuitive and it's very fast and it took him no time to, to get comfortable with the platform. You know, it, it's just a new way of thinking about things. And that's what we're finding with this. Um, what have, have, has this gotten to the hands of consumers? Are they shooting it? Have we gotten any feedback yet? Yeah, we've, got, we've gotten a lot of feedback. And that's, that's kind of the point is that it's, it's one of those things that we didn't, we didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. But the momentum has, is gaining quickly on this gun. And, I, and you know, walking around these shows, we see a lot of people and old friends and things like that. And everyone I've passed is like, hey, what's up with this new SAS? I've heard about it. Or I haven't I seen it yet. I want to see it in person. Yeah, and that's so, the thing. And so the reaction is always the same. People raise the gun. And they, they, they all react the same. They can't believe that this light, it's like you turned on a light switch <laughs> because it, it's a mix of fiber optic and tritium. So it's right. very bright. Oh, it's very bright, yeah. So in an environment like this, it's awesome. In a, in a darker room, it's awesome. But in, even in bright daylight, it comes up really sharp and it's, and it's really intuitive. KJ, we got another question? Okay. <laughs> For our Canadian <laughs> brethren... Um, what's the barrel length and is it available in Canada? So 3.1 is the barrel length. And of course we have the, the, uh, XL version, uh, at 3.6, uh, XL 365, with even more capacity. Um, yeah. in Canada, always an interesting question. There are licenses involved and a, a whole lot of things, steps we have to go through. So it's not immediately available in Canada, but, uh, it will be, it will be. This uh, gun will be available. So it, it handgun laws they're they're a little different it, there's yeah. a lot of moving parts to canadian law with handguns so um i don't know when yeah uh but it's 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 never easy yeah just like but some obviously of our, uh, you guys want to bring it there oh we we will we will do everything in our power to bring it there but there are handgun laws that are restrictive capacity laws that are restrictive and this gun obviously falls into some of those categories that may be on the borderline of uh of capacity restriction and then just the licensing to get it up there so it's uh it's not easy to get it from our even though it's a Close neighbor, it's not always easy to get it over yeah. there. So w- yeah. but as soon as we can, we will. All right, one more. The the SAS version on, in an XL? Usually those questions are like, I don't know yet, but I think in terms of the reception of this gun, uh, I would say that's that's pretty likely. I mean, That's interesting because it kind of, you go, but, but this is a anti-snag, put it in a pocket kind of gun. Now, you know it, what it does is it proves the point that this is a good system besides the, the fact that we're talking about a concealed carry. Because, yeah. you know, in XL, you go, well, that's not a pocket gun anymore, is it? But if the system is a good sighting system and it's quick... That's the key. Is If it's a quick sighting system, you're still using that XL in a lot of cases for the same reasons, even if you're pulling it from a, a holster or, or, right. or, or you know, maybe, maybe it is relevant if you're carrying it you know, in a coat pocket or something. But, uh, but I think the, what, what may be more important is the technology. But what we really want to do with, with the 365 platform um, is have a lot of options, and, and it's, it's, it's been widely adopted. So you have standard sights, you have now the SAS sighting system, you have um, a product that it's, we, we released the information, so I'm not telling you anything that's a secret, but the Romeo Zero yep. uh, optic that I think you've seen, oh, oh, um, yes. but will be on, uh, on the gun, on an XL, so it's our Romeo reflex optic, and, uh, but it's a really thin, small little super reflex light. optic, super light. It's actually a polymer uh, case as well as a polymer lens uh so it's very unique very affordable Um, makes it really easy to put it on any gun and it's it mm -hmm. doesn't add any weight makes you it it doesn't add any size either really it's probably going to fit in most holsters if you're carrying it you know either on your hip or in your appendix or whatever it's absolutely a carryable you know that that's been the the dilemma red dots are awesome to go Mm -hmm. to the range and shoot and do whatever you do and if you're carrying a full-size holster but for concealed carry, a eh, little more problematic. But this now makes really a single stack. And there's applications beyond the 365, 1911s, other single stacks. So, so it has yeah. application there. So, um, so there's a lot of variants. And I'd say with the reaction to SAS, uh, the 365 XL will probably have a variant at some point. The problem is just catching up. I mean, right now right. the 365 has been a platform that hasn't been easy to keep up with in terms of the, the demand in the market. Uh, but I'd say that's a likelihood. Well, I like guns that make it easier for people to carry all the time Mm -hmm. because that's what we're looking for. You know, having your permit doesn't do you any good if you don't have your gun on you. And I also like it when you guys are making it easier for us to be better shooters. And that goes for whether it's the first time buyer or whatever. You know, it's kind of like we'll take any cheat we can get. And, you know, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, this gun helps you be a better shooter. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, unless you practice a lot and you become proficient, 
standard sighting systems can be challenging. And for me, with the gray beard here, I've been wearing readers for some time, and yeah. I have a choice to make if I shoot with open sights. I can either see my sights if I wear shooting glasses with bifocals in them, or, right. or I can see my target. And so it's kind of in the middle. So whether it's something like this that allows me to shoot proficiently without uh, in some kind of uh, eyewear or whatever, right. or move it up to a red dot optic. And so those are things that I think make it make it easier. We're we're going to be looking at doing a lot of things over the next several months. We have a, we're going to have a lot of news for you within the next 45 to 60 days on reflex technology and reflex uh, training. Some of our literally our handgun 101 courses at Sig Academy. We're going to start beginning a transition to red dots wow. as a part of that because yeah. it is. You think about 10 years ago, and we've said this before. 10, 12 years ago, the coolest thing you could put on your uh, your AR was a Troy battle sight or something. Right. right? Now, who goes to the range without a red dot on their rifle? It's a quicker way to teach new shooters as well. Absolutely. You don't have to explain lining up the sights and all that. That's just why we want to do started. it in the Handgun 101. We want to say, yeah. okay, you can do this if you want to be old school and learn. And some, some, I'm sure there's somebody out there saying, well, they're idiots. You know, you should right. teach yeah. somebody to shoot on open sights first. And maybe that's true. Mm -hmm. But we think, why do that when it's so much easier? And we think, whether it's two years from now or three years from now or five years from now, you'll be hard-pressed to go to the range and not see almost every handgun with some form of reflex, re reflex optical. Yeah, it's it's definitely heading that way. Okay, we got another one? Okay. Selling this slide, if someone already has a, a P365 and selling this on top, would that work? I know uh, this is, there are a lot of changes. I mean, the, some of the controls on here are even slimmed down. Yeah, the... We, we don't plan to do that right now because the gun was built as a package, as a, as a concealed carry package. So you've got, right. so we didn't really talk that much about that. But if you, if you look at this gun, if you're familiar with a SIG, there's usually a takedown lever here, and there's usually a slide uh, release here. Right. And those are virtually gone. Uh, this yeah. this re requires a, uh, a dime or a screwdriver or something to turn it down to take, take the slide down. And then we don't recommend using the takedown lever. This is a sort of a slingshot process. Uh, yeah, the slide stop is is it's there, but it's just barely there. I mean, if you if you have you know really good dexterity or strength in your hand, you may be able to use the gun using the, the slide release. But we we actually recommend to use this uh, that you're gonna, way. So you're going to rack it. Too. Yeah, you're going you're to slingshot or rack yeah. it to drop the slide. And so for those reasons, it doesn't make a lot of sense because there's some things that would have to change inside the trigger group, which we you know we don't like. We, we prefer not to sell a lot of stuff that require armor's level stuff. And <laughs> Absolutely, so and we, most of us don't want to mess with the trigger yeah. group in any gun either. And and we are the you know we have we are definitely a market leader in modular handguns. Uh, yeah. Obviously with the 320. Oh yeah, and you've we been don't doing advertise that. the standard 365 as a modular handgun, but it's it's very similar to a 320. It can be modular, and we we do have some ideas about the standard 365 in terms of modularity in the future, um, near future. Hint, hint. Yeah, I mean, well, we're always thinking. You know that. I mean, we, we like to think about ideas. and But this one in particular, there's problematic things that make it uh, very difficult to, to buy the slide and, and Yeah, it retrofit it to something right. else, yeah. All right, well, the SIG P365 SAS, if you're wanting another concealed carry gun, this is something different. You don't have anything like it already, that's for sure. Congratulations on the win. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Thanks Tom. for having us on. Yes, sir. All right.